back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped, uh So promise you don't want no issues Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of 8 More Than 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. We are your host, Harrison. Najee. All right, today we are joined by a great Convo Media family. We've been waiting to do this for a long time just to do some partnering up. And this won't be the last, but this was definitely the first. And we got our inaugural meeting up with DJ J Red. J Red is joining us today. Today for joining us, man. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, man. For sure. You were the first show we looked at when um we joined a great combo media. So uh, we wanted to ask you, uh, how is your, first off, tell us about your show. So my show is called Res View. Uh, you can find it on YouTube as well as great combo media. And uh, on my show, we talk about, it's a hip hop panel, a discussion board for hip hop. Uh, we do uh, interviews, artist interviews from indie artists all the way up to major artists. Uh, we do uh, debate shows. So if anybody out there likes ESPN, uh, when it comes to like Shan or ESPN, like Steve, Stephen A. Smith, and then uh, if you watch Undisputed, you know, me and DJ PM, shout out to DJ PM, we're like the Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless of hip hop. Uh, so we do that. Shout out to my girl, Anicia. But yeah, man, it's, it's a hip hop platform that focuses primarily on the hip hop culture. And uh, we, we talk about pretty much everything in hip hop and we talk about other things too but that's mainly what it is man for sure what, what uh who, who do you feel like has been one of your favorite guests that you had on crazy bone from bone thugs um uh, that that has been because that's my favorite rapper personally uh that that group they they inspire pretty much all this stuff like for me because i got into music first and then like music and acting at the same time and then eventually got into uh podcast and now i dj uh, but yeah, man, um, having him on here was like a dream come true. I didn't even know I was going to end up getting him on here. Uh, but yeah, that's that's been my favorite guest that I've had thus far. He wasn't the one who threw the bottle during the uh, first one. No, no, no. Yeah, that was busy. I was supposed to actually have busy on the show. Um, was that last year? The year, like, yeah, it was. It was like the year before last, but he, he didn't show up. Uh, so yeah, but how long have you been uh, doing your show? So I started back in 2016 um, and we did it for like almost a year and then I stopped to work on an album. Um, and then I honestly had got uninspired from it because it, it was different from how you see it now. It was just um, me pretty much. I had in the end, I ended up having guests on there, but it was just me. It, it wasn't like a live show or wasn't a debate show. It was just me talking about like, hey, these are my top five underrated MCs of all time. Hey, this is my... Um, these are the top songs with no hooks that you didn't think about. Just a lot of hip hop knowledge that I was spreading. And then eventually I ended up interviewing Mulatto. Uh, she goes by Lotto now, but Mulatto, Yin Yang Twins, Bone Crusher, just different people. Uh, I interviewed uh, one of TI's uh, engineers. And uh, and then, I, like I said, I came to a halt uh, because I was working on my project. And then um, I got motivated to do it back again. So I started it back up in 2018. And that's when DJ PM, it started being more of like a debate show. And uh, yeah, we've been going strong since then. So yeah, roughly since 2016, but consistently, I would say since like late 2017 going to 2018. Okay. Well, shoot, there's no wonder how great combo found you. Um, how you how you like it since being on a network? How's it been? Pretty good, man, because I was excited that they reached out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think all of us, when we start these podcasts, we have goals and aspirations, but we don't know exactly where they're going to go. Uh, if you would have told me this some years ago, like you're going to have your own platform and you're going to interview different people and great convo will reach out and all this stuff, or it was an honor, you know what I'm saying? Just to have my platform be on somebody else's platform. And it made me very op um, optimistic about what would happen in the future. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but it's been, it's been great, man. I like the, all, you know, the staff over there, um i like the fact that it's a lot of diversity you got uh shows that talk about hip-hop wrestling uh just you know, you know all kind of different things like the i think it's called the battle podcast or battle battleground. something battleground. Battleground. Yeah, they'll, they'll be on here uh the 13th of february and um mm -hmm. i'm really excited about this show. I, I really actually enjoy this show because it's like it's real nostalgic like listening to the show like you said it's a lot of variety got like a law show but the battleground show like they they had like Booker T on there. I think they're trying to get Goldberg and stuff. Like it's 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 a lot of diversity on the network, like you said. 
Yeah, well, who uh so who who made you get into podcasts like that? One of your friends, uh somebody else you knew talked to you about it, or you kind of were just like, Hey, you know, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna try this thing out. Yeah, so um it was a little bit of both. Like my homeboy, shout out to Shy Shy D, he's a producer of the show as well. Um, he just like I, I think we were just bouncing ideas around and he was a like, man, yeah, you should do your own show. And I was kind of thinking about it, and this is before um, you know podcasting was always popular but this was around the time when you know it wasn't like like everybody was doing it. everybody I and mean, my mom was doing it. Nah, hell nah. yeah you know what i'm saying so this was before all that stuff so i was just like um yeah like why not like i could like i said i was like i could interview people i could it's just another branch of the music that i do and i was like it'd be genius because the intro to the show is my song you know what i'm saying and then i could play my music through me talking and stuff like that so it was just a great idea so we bounced around and um yeah he just came up with it he was like yeah i can shoot it you know uh because we already had uh the camera set up you know what i'm saying and we were doing that for a while just having it be more theatrical i stopped doing it like that recently i just been doing more like live streaming and you know uh zooming and different things like that but um and then or just use my phone you know what i'm saying but uh <laughs> yeah we he encouraged me to do it and uh yeah we were doing it uh for that time frame i took that break and came back but yeah it was definitely suggested by peers they were like you got a lot of hip-hop knowledge and a lot of people don't know the stuff that you know because when i tell you i'm like a hip-hop encyclopedia i try to know who what when and where specifically like in the 90s but i go back and study the art form like in the 80s and then the uh late 70s as well so yeah just putting everything i have up here to the masses so so when you so like you said you said when you started y'all had the camera set up so y'all basically had you had like a space or whatever that you were like uh people were coming in and sitting on the couch and y'all talking and they was recording it or like what do you mean yeah so same place like right here this is before i had like it was just this couch has always been here but this background wasn't here you know i didn't have all the vinyl and stuff so you go look back at the mm -hmm. earlier shows first it was just me sitting on the couch or I'd be in different areas and we would have uh the cameras that we shoot music videos with we would just use that we got a boom mic and I would hook it up just like that so that's what I mean like theatrical or like just like a television show yeah yeah, yeah. and um yeah so I would do it just like that I actually thought that shit was a green screen because the camera's so clear um, but yeah so we started off doing it like that first and then once I stopped and started it back up we were still using the camera but we moved to a green screen because on the other part of my house i got like a little it's funny when people walk in they were like do y'all do fake ids up in here or something like that because we got the green screen as the backdrop and stuff like that so we were doing it on green screen for a minute and then we came back to the couch and then i said okay it's a new season so like the third i think this was like the third year i did resview that's when we came up what was it third or fourth year i think it was like the third year that's when we came up to with the, the uh vinyl designs and different things like that so yeah it's been different variations of the show but yeah we did start off using the camera and then like say for instance like when i do media or if uh i'm somewhere like for example when i was at ti studio i had the camera there i'll still bring the camera out sometime you know but you know with the, i like the live effect more because it's right then and there and you don't have to you know edit and all that other stuff so yeah we we started like that but it's different variations we still use the camera sometimes i'm glad to have you with the with the gang gang so um i did want to ask you what did you have in store for 2022 so in 2022 um uh, i want to get more guests you know um i've like i said i've so far and i'm just naming off the top of my head but like mc shan i already said crazy bone mr Servon, um lotto a lot of different names but i want to get to the point to where a lot like for example what happened last year um oh well, yeah last year 2021 i interviewed um uh, monster beats and mm -hmm. they're uh they produced for lil wayne and uh mac that just got out of jail they're based in new orleans but i like my show a like they ended up putting it on like a website somewhere you know so like it'd be a media outlet like you go, you go on hip hop dx or all hiphop.com and they see a clip like how they do vlad tv you know what i'm saying like yeah you'll see a vlad tv clip somewhere uh on another site because this is where the news source comes from so my goal is to have more of that happen have more guests and then just keep growing my following um 
especially on YouTube, because YouTube, it can be hard to get subscribers and different things like that. But just to broaden my, um, you know, like, and it's crazy because you have all these big names and, and different things like that, but you still got like a core fan base that you have. But I just want to grow my core fan base because I don't need all the, you know, I, I'm not trying, my goal isn't to be like a breakfast club, but I think the perfect example of what I would want is to be more like a Kevin Samuels, you know, how he you came wanna, from. Wanna disrespect people? Not, <laughs> no, not disrespect, not disrespect people, but. You ain't got no job. Your penis little and girl, you know, you're ugly. <laughs> I got you. I can I can show you what to do now. You know, <laughs> I, I got get some glasses. Now you got the setup. So what you need to do is you got to just disrespect. You got to do this. Now how can you? How you sit with your hand on your head? Can you do that? Yeah, I don't think I'm good with that. I don't think See, I'm good with it's, that. It's all about the mannerisms and stuff, right? Now. Yeah. But based off of him working from the comforts of his own home and literally, the breakfast like different people talk about him on their platform, and he does it in the comforts of his own home. So. It's just a thing. Like I'm just trying to grow my following. Like, like that's that's pretty much the goal every year, uh, mm -hmm. and then get 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 more guests, a lot more of my favorite artists, and different things like that. So, that's do you the do the audio at all, or do you are you all video based? Uh, I do. Uh, so I rip the the audio from my live shows. Mm -hmm. But your main your main stuff is uh video, correct? Video, yeah, yeah, yeah. I call it I call it a visual podcast. Because okay. at first, you know, when I first started, like, you remember, like, podcasting wasn't everybody and their mama had it. So yeah. they were like, what What do you have? Like, what? And it was hard to describe the show. I was like, it was a show. But then mm -hmm. when podcasting became, like, a thing, they were like, I saw that. I was like, yeah, it's a podcast. I guess you can call that shit. So, yeah. yeah. Ours is, like, the opposite. We did audio. And then we, we got videos up. But it's, it's harder to sit there. Because it's harder to do both. I got to sit there and take the time to edit it. And then I got to make the audio, the video visually aesthetic and make it cool. It's just easier to get the audio out. But then I got to get the, the video channel and stuff like that. It, it's, it's cool. But like how yeah. you want, like the Kevin, I just want ours to be because like, you know, we got the guests and stuff and I don't want the Breakfast Club uh, vibe either because they, they doing interviews. I just want people to come on and like we just chilling, you know what I'm saying? Like just having a back conversation. I want to get like in those vibes. Like if you ever watch like a uh, Horrible Decisions or all the other podcasts when guests come on everybody just in there having combos and stuff and that's probably like the only hard part about when you do have like guests guests come on you asking that first half of it is just all about them all about them all about them and it's it's so uncomfortable mm -hmm. at least yeah. to me because nobody knows it's not relaxed and then hopefully the second time they come on it's chill it's chill it's chill hopefully like our show is uh, more comedy. We'll do sports. We do everything, and then you know, hopefully, we get to that segue. But it's 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 a difficult journey, I guess. You know what I'm saying? But oh yeah, I yeah. appreciate. But the, I appreciate the ride. And um, Josh, what's your who's your uh, um, wish list for guests for 2022? I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe maybe like some some different uh, athletes or. You know, like a big kind of, uh, I would like to do like a big movie person or somebody, you know, like on one of the TV shows or something we watch. Or, you know, it's really, I don't really have nobody. Put no, your name. No. Put it out there. I don't have nobody like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really got, I don't really got nobody like that. I'm going to put mine. I'm going to try to see if we can give Bow Wow his flowers. Because I don't know if y'all saw it. Like, I thought this was really wild that they was like, if somebody put a gun to your head, and they was like, name, Amazing. start to finish three little Bow Wow songs. Could you finish it? And they was really sitting there. It was a couple people talking about I Be Dead. And I was like, how could you not finish Man. Bow Wow? Like, they was so cool. I would have understood, but not Bow Wow. Yeah, not, yeah. I got it. I got I got history with Bow Wow too, man. Uh, because my 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 folks are, will uh attest to it, but Bow Wow actually had some smoke for us on the show. For real. Yeah, man. Uh, this was back in 2019, October 2019 to be exact. And oh, I you can't know, put the good word in for us then. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so he uh yeah, he had a it was an incident, like he didn't like what we said on the show. Like mm -hmm. I didn't say it, but DJ PM, my, my uh partner said it. Mm -hmm. Uh ba basically because Bow Wow was doing a lot of different like side note, has he worked with Travis Porter? Who Bow Wow? No, no, not not Bow Wow, DJ P uh yeah. yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. Like that name sound familiar. 
Yeah, no, nah, I, mean, I don't think yeah, he don't work with like he's a popular DJ in Atlanta, but I don't okay. think he worked with uh Travis yeah. Porter. But uh yeah. but yeah, basically some stuff was said on the show and uh Bow Wow caught wind of it, sent me an angry DM, and then uh you know I just told him I I invited him on the show. I'm like, you know, I'm not we're not gonna bite our tongues on here, you know what I'm saying? But we didn't mean it in that way or what wh- whatever it was, but it's funny that you brought his name up. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought that yeah. was yeah. You said what? No, he ever on the show? no, 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 he didn't. He was just, I don't do interviews, all that other stuff, which I feel like was capped. But it, I like making opportunities out of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you like threat, you know, send a threat or whatever like that, hey, come on the show so we can explain the situation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he took it, he took it like, to be fair, my homie did say something that was a little, you know, out there. And I, when he said it, the reaction, uh on the show was like that i had was just funny but uh bow wow bow wow's an emotional guy you see that he does this you know goes on social media all the time and stuff like that but it's like i said it's funny that you brought him up we have history with bow wow but he didn't come on the show though now i'm gonna try to see if we can get him out like i said bow wow always been if you could see how it was in um overton or mcmurray and oh not i mean uh oh three oh four bow wow take i just find it funny how like niggas discredit even if you don't like them or care, like discredit, like that scream tour, yeah. little wow, wow, like you, Sierra era, or like yeah. where the dog, like, like he was. However you feel about him, as he got between like twenty five or twenty one to thirty four, however he is now, like yeah. that nigga, like his acting credits or his music credits is like, it's like it ain't even nothing to like joke. Like you can joke. It's like joking on. Um, like Ludacris or something like Ludacris's music catalog stands on its own. I'd be finding it funny like when like one tweet go viral for talking nonsense and yeah. then the comments under it will like co-sign it. Like I was like, nigga, I can start to finish Shawty like mine. Um Bow Wow had listen, man, he wouldn't have been able to have a versus battle if he didn't have hits. So that that's exactly. no more. Like yeah. the fact that Lil Romeo thought he could do a versus with Bow Wow, <laughs> like I, I, I don't need he now if anybody is delusional, is yeah. Lil Romeo. Yeah, like Soldier Boy got hits, but even Soldier Boy like is gonna run out. Like even Soldier Boy showed it's gonna run out when it comes to Bow Wow. Like it's it's not even the competition. Like Bow Wow showed you like that whole Scream tour millennium. Like everybody mm-hmm. love B two K. Everybody love. B5, everybody loves Soldier Boy, everybody loves Chris Brown. Chris Brown was as popular as Chris Brown is now, post mm-hmm. incident, post whatever. When Chris Brown was at his height, he still wasn't a little Bow Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bow Wow, Bow Wow Bow- was movie ready. Bow Wow was uh don't forget he hosted 106 apart. You gotta give him Mr. 106 apart. He still got the records for the longest video. I he the only re- mm-hmm. uh what is it? Uh let me hold you. Come on, like yeah. that. No, it's it's just Bow Wow. Yeah. Bow wow had hits, and anybody that doesn't can't. They're capping. You know, I just find that I find the generation be funny as hell. Uh, but that was the one funny thing. The other funny thing I saw was viral was uh, I know y'all saw that one chick who just copped a bag with cigars. She was uh, I was watching on TikTok. Oh, I was watching on my Twitter. I just happened to scroll. It was this one chick that uh, basically went on the first date with a dude. Mm-hmm. went and got a cigar and was like she was talking to the dude she heard him in conversation she thought it'd be cool because he said he was a smoker and went to her dad's house because he smoked cigars and got him a cigar mm-hmm. and took it for a first date and was going to be a surprise for the first date i don't know what like these new feminists do and shit like that but she got like ripped to shreds i'm talking about they was calling her all type of submissives yeah and, man like, yeah I, so y'all y'all basically saw this stuff too right I thought, yeah man i saw that and my, my take on that is that the people first of all the people want attention right that's that's the first thing secondly you got to ask the people who if they were serious and commenting one are they in relationships two are people interested in actually dating you because that's called a nice gesture. Yeah. For example, when I when I'm, uh, I'm not gonna say who, but I had a situation where I was working somewhere, and the girl that I was dating at the time, uh, she randomly asked like which place that I was working at, and I just said it, you know, not thinking about it. Tell me why that following week I had an edible arrangement actually yeah. sent there. Right now, to me, that wasn't thirsty. 
that wasn't this whole submissive thing all that other stuff right which a woman should be submissive i mean i feel that but this was more of a nice gesture yeah. you know like hey out of everybody you talking to i want to be the number one person like i'm showing you my interest you know what i'm saying so i don't think that that wasn't even a big gift that that cigar thing you know what i'm saying she didn't agree. Agree. She didn't agree. And, and on top of that i just feel like it's it's like if if it was the tables turn and you see like a man doing that then they ain't gonna say nothing they're like oh that's so nice that's so cute but then if the girl doing it it's like girl why are you doing that and blah blah, blah. And like you said that's some people that sit at the house watching the soaps you know what i'm saying eat chocolate lonely in the mug you know what i'm saying so i mean i don't know man like like that kind of stuff i don't even get no energy like i see that but i ain't ironically, even yeah ironically i was on the phone and i was talking to one of my homegirls yesterday so i said I asked her, I was like, is a gesture from a girl, is a, is a, is a gift gesture inappropriate? And I was like, because, you know, essentially, if y'all talking, essentially all she all she did was just listen to something he said, and mm -hmm. she was going to show it. And she was like, well, that's just kind of weird. You know, I mean, if they've been talking, that's still kind of weird. It seems kind of thirsty. And I said, well, what's the difference? If, so if I brought you flowers from a date, what would you call me? You call me a gentleman. So I mm -hmm. said, so so I said, so when you go on a date, is a priority just for me to court you the entire time, and you me feel that you don't pay me any type of mind, or is this new balance that we supposed to do this 50-50 stuff, meaning that you just show little interest at all, and I'm just supposed to sit there without knowing, like I just supposed to feed, feed, feed. It's almost like begging, or is it like? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get the whole purpose. Like, which one is it? Like, I I, I appreciate that you listen to me the same way. You know, it, it don't make sense because now I don't hurt some people. Don't open my door. That's weak. Like, like it, they don't people, make sense. people, people are uh, confused, especially our generation, because we weren't brought up with uh, fathers in the household. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of uh, people raised with single mothers and they don't understand uh, I don't, I'm not going to say that's just a part of it, but I feel like a big part of it is we don't know who we are or what it actually means to uh, show chivalry or, you know, anything like as far as courtship, we don't court, you know what I'm saying? A lot of us end up just having sex without any type of boundaries or any type of anything. Like we, we, we don't know what we're doing. Like everybody, if you look on social media, every time I go on there, open my app, whether it's the blue app, Instagram or whatever, some woman is sharing something about, relationship dating how men ain't shit can we cuss on here oh no this is a christian show no i'm fucking with you go ahead <laughs> <laughs> how about I say i gotta make sure but it's always unhappy you know what i'm saying like i think we spend too much time on social media instead of actually being out in the dating world mm -hmm. because my thing is if you're having issues uh with so many different people that you've been dating it's like you got to look at yourself and be like okay how can i fix this issue i yeah. was talking about this earlier but the fact that a woman going on there saying that, hey, I got this cigar that was for free because he mentioned that, that was game for you ladies. You know what I'm saying? That was a lot of game to be like, hey, if you want to get chose, <laughs> do nice gestures and do because <laughs> automatically that's going to make a dude look at you in a different light. Like yeah. it don't make you look thirsty. Thirsty is if you are, you know, already giving him expensive ass gifts or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or I like bought the PS5 on the first date. On the first date, yeah. Then you looking like, <laughs> hey, hey, well, well, listen, listen. If somebody bought me a PS5 on the first date, you're not thirsty. I love you. <laughs> we'll <laughs> accept it, but you know, like and that's you know, what you would call thirsty. And it's funny because so she said something to me that also resonated. Like it just shows a difference in because I don't use Tinder. I've always just went up to people, right? right? So she said something to me that also resonated. Like the differences, I guess, in times. Like she was like. Well, how did y'all meet? You know, did you like how what was the conversation before a date? I guess if you use Tinder and you swipe or whatever, it's a quick chat, let's go meet up. So I guess in that mm -hmm. instance, uh, a Tinder date is not that much communication. So if you just do a Tinder date, you just a, a couple, hey, let's la la, and we're meeting here. Then she said it would be weird if somebody brought a cigar here. And I was like, have y'all shit, have y'all communication come? To much mind you, she's 30. Has y'all no disrespect, Lindsay? I'm not saying it, no, nothing wrong. You, you, you a star girl. I'm not saying it like that. You know, 
No, no disrespect. You killing it out here, girl. You a queen. No, so all I'm saying is, that has the shit come to that bad of like communication and talking to where like you have literally had like three to four sentences and meet here to where like uh, somebody saying like uh, as far as dialogue goes to to where like a cigar and somebody bringing a small gift is over the top. Like that's so weird to me. And then I was watching one of the reaction videos to her and she was like, the man is manipulating. This is class A narcissism because he's out there having you compete for oh him and he's well, just you're supposed to be enough. I'm like, it's it, you're courting. It's, it's a competition at the end of the day because I don't know if people know when you when you going on a date with somebody, you're not the only person that person talking to. So you're supposed to be showing them why should they stop. Dating oh. is a competition. Like yes. the you're, choosing. you're getting to choose. Do you're I want you? Because the thing is, we hold access to those relationships and those marriages, right? So the thing is, if you want a man, because most women are going to say, I want a man to take care of me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want a man to pay all the bills, which I'm cool with. But my thing is, if that is what you want, you have to be the best fit person for that job. It's like a job, you know what I'm saying? So you got to put your best foot forward and say, how can I eliminate the competition? Let me do a nice gesture. Because the average girl these days ain't going to think or be that considerate to be like, hmm, let me, uh, because they think they just got to sit and look pretty, which a lot of them could, you know what I'm saying? If Depending on how fine you are. Yeah. Because be honest, like if you out with a dime piece, the fact that you out with her, a lot of us have that inside. Like, man, I got a bad bitch up in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but to separate, when we're thinking about marrying somebody, like we're thinking about who could, you know, handle uh, the, the household oh. to take care of my kids, all this other stuff. But the thing is, if you want me to take care of you, because what do we do before we marry a girl? We go to the father and ask for a hand in marriage. That's passing off the girl. That's what we should. That's what we should. <laughs> That's what we should. Let me say that. So, but anyway, when you do that, if you don't fuck with the father, do you still got to do that? Like, if the father a bitch, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect to the father. Yeah, you ain't got to, but I'm saying traditionally, that's yeah, what respect their fathers, people. Yeah, father. you you would pass them off because, hey, this is my baby girl, I'm pass them off. So the thing is, if you're taking care of that girl, it has to be a sense of, okay, I'm not finna just be taking care of just anybody. So the thing is, ladies, you should be on some, it's a competition thing because we be in competition with each other as far as trying to get the most money. So y'all got to be in competition to try to be chose. And if it's a gesture like that, that's going to stick out to me personally and be like, oh, oh, so she really be listening. Okay. I fuck with Charlie, you know? Funny ass thing. What if your daughter, like, her, she about to get married, the nigga that asked you for a hand in marriage was like, old as you or older than you. It was like, hey, I want to ask you for your daughter's hand in marriage. Oh, I would beat the fuck out this old <laughs> <laughs> but another funny thing I, but you talking about that like they try to make sense of shit it's almost like like this poly shit now and shout out to Josh Black he said this at his set when I was uh, there at his show at uh, Zany's <clears throat> he was like yeah y'all do this one thing called poly you know back you know you asked my grandma and then back then they called that trifling so it's like <laughs> every, everything that they try to do now is like everybody try to make sense about everything you know like you want to be 50-50 you know but you ain't gonna pay for the date but you asked to go on a date um if somebody get a cigar then the person a narcissist so i don't know it's just, oh but y'all did all that oh so then check this out right they go on a second date and now y'all did all that stuff about him he listens to her because she says she has a good vinyl collection right oh yeah mm -hmm. he takes her to a vinyl store to increase her collection because mm -hmm. he heard her say this in conversation so mm -hmm. all this about he was manipulating her. He takes her on the second date, listening off the same thing. So let her have been a fool and listen to the comments because her, her TikTok went viral. I'm talking about big viral. And so all these people talking about how much the dude was using her, this and that. He didn't give a fuck about her. Niggas just did the same thing that she did and then listened to her and took her to a vinyl store and did the exact same thing and helped her vinyl collection. And then a cigar company like heard her and flew her out to Atlanta, and now, now she got a bag for cigars for, like, a first date thing. That may have been strategic on her end, too. I mean, you know, um, yeah. you know, putting it out on there because she knew. The thing is, if you say anything about dating, right, um, because I saw it was some clip that I saw, like, a girl said that she's married, and when she was fixing her man a plate, the relatives of that man was tripping, talking about, girl, don't fix him a plate, well, whatever, whatever, right? And the thing is, we have a lot of depressed, hurt people out there. You know what I'm saying? That 
don't have any relationship skills they they choose the wrong people to date and then get mad and put it out on social media like all men ain't shit or all women ain't shit my thing is if all men ain't shit and all women ain't shit do you look at yourself and be like okay maybe i'm the fucking problem that's how I but i think i think the other thing is you got a lot of people that they know that they can't compare to someone you know what I'm saying like if somebody doing something special like damn she cooking cleaning she bringing your plate uh-uh you don't need to do that that's just because they don't do that you know exactly. what I'm saying? like you always that misery I always want a friend so if i'm not doing something and you looking amazing then i'm gonna have a problem with it like no nah, that ain't even that special and blah 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 he just you and that's what i'm saying like and i just feel like the thing about social media, it, it gives people the opportunity to get into your business. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you want to put out what you want people to see. Because at the end of the day, it don't really matter. If if your girl is, like, if your dude is in the house, like, baby boy cooking naked, then that's what y'all do. That ain't got right. shit to do with the world. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I think, I think that's the biggest thing. Like, people want to put the way they feel about things on everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Boosie, like the prime Boosie be getting destroyed on social media for talking about the gay community. You know what I'm saying? But if that's how you feel, who gives a fuck about how Boosie feels? You know right. what I'm saying? Like, it ain't like Boosie say something and then Atlanta and California, Louisiana, like, all right, that's the law. We got to yeah. do this. No, like, it don't matter. So I just feel like people, they be so in their feelings all the time. You gotta be, you gotta literally be so PC on everything that you say because you don't know who you're gonna offend. Like I think that's the biggest thing. Like that's the biggest change in this generation and then in our parents' generation. Because you know, you go to our parents' generation and you had Richard Pryor and you had different people that they say whatever the fuck they want to say. Like now we got Dave Chappelle, but still Dave Chappelle say what he wanna say and they still try to destroy his ass. Yeah, like, they do. If you want to see what something happened. Like especially somebody relationship you just go on Twitter, like I probably because yeah, yeah. like I said, every, like I said, everybody relationship goes with Will and Jada, and now you see with Jada and shit, and then um, Steph and them was open relationship, and she had to come shut that down. Um, I think somebody else was. Uh, about it. What did she say about it? They ain't in an open relationship. Yeah, <laughs> like that was that was everybody. Even even that shit. Thank God Jeezy came and shut that down because that whole gender. Oh, he shut it down. Yeah, it was a girl. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, so that was a rumor going. Okay. Yeah, that was a rumor. They was saying, and they was saying, uh, and uh, look, I ain't nobody to tell nobody how to raise their kids. But oh, wait, 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 wait. you got to tell me what what happened with Jesus. I don't know what you're talking about. So him and Jenny May, you know, they pregnant and they was having a baby. So they said the baby was gonna be gender fluid. And so I just, if it was her, and let's just say Bobby McLaren or whatever, I wouldn't have cared. But it's Jeezy, Mr. 17.5. All right. Exactly. Mr. Snow. All right. You know what I'm saying? You can't say my president is black. All the stuff Jeezy done put out. You talking about you have a gender fluid baby. Yeah. That was just weird to me. And right. so they end up coming on the next day and saying that that was a fake report. She ended up saying they're having a girl. But it was just like you were saying earlier, today's time and everybody else's time is just, it's just so funny. And then with the whole date and bringing it back up in like retrospect. It's just I don't know, like I don't know what people want. Like I don't, I don't get like I hate Twitter, but I love Twitter at the same time. Like I hate that it give everybody a voice, like all the time. Like, that's the gift, yeah. That's the gift and curse. I feel like a social media, but like you said, like how you saying well, I don't know what they want. They don't know what they want. Yeah. Nobody know. Like well, I feel like more so it's men because I see a lot of women complaining, talking about stuff more than men. The truth <laughs> is, with men, we're gonna find us some pussy, some kind of way. Right, mm -hmm. it, it, the, the the women always say that the men ain't shit, but it's more y'all than it is of us. So if every man decided to not be shit, you if you wanted to get wiped up, you would still have to choose which yeah. one. You notice when men call up to like these shows, right? For example, when we was talking about Kevin Samuels. It's always women that are called up there and disagree with them, right? Mm -hmm. When men call up there, he'll roast, go in on their ass, and they listen and 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 go about their business. How do I look like if if he's telling me, "Hey, you need to make more money as a man"? I'm like, "No, I'm not. No, I don't need to, or whatever." I'm uh, like, "Dude, he's trying you to." Know, to you see the one where he was? It was one dude. Did you see the one he was? <laughs> it was one dude on there. He was talking about. I think he was talking about like corporate shares and stocks and bonds. He was like, "Yeah, you got to do all that. Fuck all that." It was a dude on there. He was like, "You got to do that stocks and bonds and corporate share." And he was like, stocks and bonds. He's like, how much you make a month? He was like, uh, less than a thousand, about nine hundred. He was like, man, fuck all that stocks and bonds. You don't need to be talking about none of that shit. He was like, he was like, yeah, you're right. 
And the dude, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you're right. I'll do He's like, we talking about none of that shit. You ain't making no goddamn money. Talk about some corporate shares and stocks and bonds. But yeah, he be roasting everybody. I, it's, it's hilarious to me. I think I saw one. That's why I said Twitter don't make no sense. It was this black chick. She said, I hate when males, black men come on here and say, I only date black women. And I was like, I don't, I don't even know. Yeah. I saw, I saw, yeah, and, and it was another one I saw that said that uh, something about in order for it's sad that a black man will only date a black woman that he finds attractive. That was what it was. That was what it was. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? What the fuck? Like, I, I, like, that like, don't make no sense. don't find attractive though. Huh? That don't make I no saying, sense. I don't. That makes no sense. And that shit went viral. That was. The, <laughs> I was but, like, I was but like, see, I think a lot of people be doing that. They say the dumbest shit because they know that it's gonna go viral, right? Like, and, and, or they know that they're not attractive. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe their whole life they ain't been attractive. Like, but, every- but no, that that part don't kill me, right? Let that dumbass tweet stay. It's the shit. Look at the thread the under comments. Yeah, Somebody comments, gonna yeah. agree. I'm like, bro, like when that one chick was on. I think it was uh eight at the table or something like that. And she was like, no, it wasn't that. It was something else. She was like, I was with, I got on a date, and we did this episode with Josh. We was yeah, at a date, and she didn't feed her kid. And she took the bait, and the dude, she went to McDonald's, and the dude didn't pay for her child that she forgot to feed before the date. And she was like, I'm not going to fuck this dude because he didn't pay for her child's food. And then she was like, it wasn't about him paying because she had the money. It was about to see if he would offer. And motherfuckers in the comments about it's a test to see what she loved him and the child. I'm like, girl, it's the first date. Oh, like, I, I, I don't know, bro. It's a or, or, or you or you had that that uh, episode with that girl was talking about like, yeah, I was talking to this rich dude and he had bought me an apartment and stuff, and then he didn't want me no more. And I'm not yeah. like I'm not leaving, so I brought my boyfriend in and blah blah blah. Hell to the no. These women are delusional, man. A <laughs> lot of people, it, it's a lot of lost, hurt females that are out there. And the thing is, we can't save them all. You know, it, it, it's a sad situation uh, right. because, yeah, like we we can try because this is from what I know because I like getting different aspects of like what women go through. You know what I'm saying? And uh, more so, like I said, when I turn on my blue app, I always see women always complain because. Men, if we if we get rejected, we'll be like, okay, fuck it. I'm gonna go to somebody else. You'll find somebody. You know exactly. that may not no, be the no, person. No, that you never want. settle for a no. No, right. like it may not even be the person that you want, but we'll be like, fuck it. Like shit, I'm I'm good. But women have this standard of what they want, and you know if they don't get it from this particular person, they'll be dating these same type of ain't shit guys, and then get on media and be like, black man ain't shit, all this other stuff. So I'll be yeah. like, man. But if it's you, you. It is you. It's you. It, it's you. I'm like the that's funniest what, niggas are I'm the t- ones who want some ass and then go agree with the come. Don't even worry about that. I that's hate a that. weak nigga. Then be the fuck. That's a weak nigga right there, girl. He don't even understand. The like funny man, thing is, one, I can see him. One girl, that's was a weak girl, ass nigga. <laughs> it was one girl on Twitter that made it to World Star because she was getting clapped while her son was crying on the door. So she was on Twitter. Because somebody dropped her tape on World Star, and so the boy crying on the door while she getting clapped, and somebody posted it because it made on OnlyFans. So she made a post saying, "We done all had sex with our kid in the house," and so niggas was roasting her <laughs> on Twitter. It's like, "Nah, you a bad mother." <laughs> and of course, you know it's the captain save whole nigga. Nah, bro, he just these lame niggas. Keep your head up, bro. Ain't nobody work like uh, you know, those simps. <laughs> like, like no, y'all, man. Oh, I can't stand no damn simp. <laughs> I'd be like, bro, like you was one of. She's not gonna see this, but like, don't worry about it. Like, you're not getting no ass for this. Like, uh-huh. right? Yeah. <sighs> Let's move on. Like I said, hey, uh, Kobe died what 26. Shout out my nigga Bean. Hey, you think they ever gonna make him a national holiday? He gets a lot of attention. I'm I, I, deservingly so, but he get a lot of attention. For I, don't, I think I, they're gonna, you think they're gonna I make him a national day. day. I think Cali will make it. You know, what I'm saying a national day. But I don't think the world. You know, what I'm saying. Yeah. Because at, a lot of attention everywhere, though. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, not saying nothing bad. Like, I, you know, I'm a diehard Kobe fan, but Kobe was just Cali, and you know what I'm saying? He and he's basketball, you know what I'm saying? That's like Jordan died. Jordan died, they ain't gonna make it to no national right. holiday, you know what I'm saying? So I just feel like 
like it could be big, but at the end of the day, like you got Martin Luther King Day, so you're gonna compare Kobe to Martin Luther King Day. That's kind of disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Like popular opinion. I really feel like they made Martin Luther King Day to let their ass off the hook. Because the more and more as I got older and I really see how they treated his ass, mm-hmm. I really feel like they was on the verge of calling him a communist. And they really got off the hook with somebody. I really feel like they pulled the trigger and they really just do this because, like I said, they use his quotes all the time. And the Black Lives Matter ain't do nothing but highlight the shit that they really didn't fuck with Martin Luther King. I really feel like they just doing this as a scapegoat because they didn't I, fuck. I'm, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying in general. I'm saying in general. Like, like, you know, I ain't about to be united to, you had to, to Martin Luther King, and I don't think that's a like the people that's got holidays. I don't think Kobe had an impact enough to get though. Kobe's an athlete; he was great. He did his thing, but he played basketball. You know what I'm well, saying? Yeah. Like that ain't racism really ain't, racism, ain't racism, racism ain't over. And we off on Monday, so I'm just saying. I just don't think that I don't Kobe. Yeah, Kobe, yeah, know. and I, and I, I agree. And with I'm not you comparing the two of them. I'm not comparing yeah. the two of them by at all. I'm just saying he ain't he ain't he ain't stop it either, and he still got treated like shit. But I, he ain't no activist leader. I mean, but he changed a lot of shit. You can't he say he, he highlighted. He changed a lot of shit. I'm not saying again. I'm not comparing Paul Luther King to Kobe Bryant. I ain't, I ain't stupid now. I'm just saying, you know. It's just typically, a- yeah, typically when people have holidays, they did something pivotal in the community, you know what I'm saying, or made some type of a change and different things like that. So while Kobe was influential, uh, like you said, like if Michael Jordan were to pass away, God forbid, today, uh, it would be a situation like it, it wouldn't be like a holiday. Basketball players, I don't see them that would be equivalent like to Tupac. Tupac did uh some pivotal stuff in the community, but he was a rapper, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that anybody like maybe if they did more of like uh like david banner for example right say for instance if he was to continue the route that he's going in and was actually making change and all this stuff and i'm bringing him up because he's heavy in the conscious community but say if he was a political leader or political activist right Mm -hmm. then i would feel like that would be a sector to consider a national holiday but i don't see kobe doing that but I do want to touch on the Martin Luther King thing. Of course, that's to pacify the black community so we wouldn't won't turn up. That was because if you look at the FBI every year, they they pretty much shit on Martin Luther King Day by because yeah. they took him out. So they'll say, hey, on today, we want to honor Martin Luther King and all that when they're the ones that took him out. So, yeah, that was Martin Luther King Day was to pacify the black community so we would calm down. You know, yeah. they only talk about his. um uh, I have a dream side, but they don't talk about him actually wanting to be, bring black people out of poverty, black people to have actual rights, justice, you know, different things like that. Because as soon as that motherfucker was talking about money, that's when they were <laughs> yeah. like, okay, he he, he got to go. He talking about reparations and stuff, he got to go. So Boondocks yeah. put it perfect when they was like, get this commie motherfucker about it. If you watch the Boondocks episode with him on mm-hmm. there, if he never would have died, that's probably how... They would minus the part with him shucking and jiving at the, the uh <laughs> at the part where he had the little benefits concert. Like him, that's that's how they would have probably treated him if he would have lived it out. But um yeah. I did want to touch on one. So this one I got from uh from uh the Red View. Um the WAC 100 comment. I felt this way about him for a long time. Um yeah. I did send you the topic already, so you already knew this one. It probably was a little strong for the generation, but you know, social media is kind of like a drug at this point. So I will say I do have a problem with him and Act. I feel like they are very toxic in the community. Um, WAC 100 and academics. You know, I feel like they are cancerous. I feel like they do a lot of stuff that's detrimental. You can go to academic and Vic Mensa. You can go to you know what academic has done on um, state of the culture. WAC 100. Never seen what WAC 100 done, but, you know, he got his issue with uh, Roddy Rich. Um, you know, he the thing we did with uh, 6 9 mm-hmm. I can go on and on. Um, I'm on the mic now, so I can't think of all the examples I had with him. But um, your opinion on him. Yeah, well, shout out to everybody on my TikTok. They've been commenting like crazy. It's like 12,000 views at this point. But, um, but yeah, man, so WAC 100 is a cancer to the culture. And the reason I say that is because literally every time that you hear his name come up in the news it's negativity uh i haven't heard of anything now of course the positive that people do 
you know to be fair that's not really shown as much meaning like if right now if i go and feed the homeless and stuff that may not get as much news as uh other than me slapping somebody in a club you know what i'm saying yeah. as a celebrity you know what i'm saying so that's that but whack 100 you look at his history he constantly beefs he's not even a rapper but he beefs with a lot of rappers he puts out he seems to be some type of informant because he ha always has this type of information this um this type of discreet information like i heard him talking shit about master p recently and he's talking about yeah master p had to sell his house and i know this for a fact and da, 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 all this stuff and it's like how do you know all this and why are you feeling the need to put it out in the public you know what i'm saying he disrespected meek mill saying he's overrated uh he disrespected bobby smurder saying you know he hadn't had a hit he's doing all this dancing and stuff like that instead of saluting this motherfucker that did time that's supposed to be what a real nigga does. You know what I'm saying? He did time for himself and for his homeboy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's all this stuff, but uh, in academics, he feeds off of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, as a culture, like the Breakfast Club, right? I don't agree with everything that they do, but when 6 9 got out of prison, they could have taken that opportunity to get hella views because to interview 6 9 you would have, you're guaranteed a million. A guaranteed a million after easily, that particular point easily easily but they the, did Club, the first time he was on there yeah they did instantly but they knew they were like you know what nah you know he did all that snitching that's not what we do in this culture so fuck it right but whack 100 what do you want to do i want to do business with him and he hides it behind business and money and you supposed to be this pyro you know what i'm saying you supposed to be this blood all this other stuff he's been exposed by suge knight for you know not being what he said that he is and uh, like I said, man, he beefs with everybody and nothing positive. What positive is you telling about Master P having to sell his house? Regardless if it's, if it's true or not, what does that do? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's nothing positive for us. So, yeah, like, I, I don't fuck with academics. That's one thing. But I damn sure don't fuck with um, WAC 100. I think he's a cancer to the culture. And I don't see how the game is even still affi affiliated with him as far as him being in his manager and all that other shit. So. I, I thought he would have learned from uh, Tyson knocking his ass out. Uh, that oh, that was that, that wasn't real. That wasn't. No, nah, they were joking about that. Yeah, man, I, I just remember. I thought that was real. I thought they had like a picture of his face swollen and some more stuff, but I thought that was real. Man, now yeah. I can't even report it being real. But yeah. I just like I think the last thing I I saw other than the. The Bobby Smurder one. And I, I think Bobby Smurder probably handled it the best. He was like, bro, I just did seven years. Like, you know, it's like, if it don't do no money, like, what I'm going to be? Like, what he basically, like, what I'm going to comment for? Like, you know, I'm laughing. It, it ain't doing nothing wrong with me dancing. Uh, So what's it going to, you know, what it don't hurt you, basically. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. So I just don't, and then with the Roddy Rich shit, bringing the dude on that was saying he wasn't like a real crip. Um, Like, what do these things get you? It's always at the community. It's always at the Cali community. Somewhat, it's somewhat seen. You know, um, you seen what they did to Nip. Um, six nine is a snitch. Uh, you you tear down your own block, but yet you supposed to be for the people. You don't have any records. I mean, like you ain't got no music. You almost like you almost like like a knockoff Dame Dash. You know what I'm saying? Like you just you just known for who you be around, and yeah. it's the same with academics. I like I said academics was i don't get how i don't know what academics appeal is but academics what 2.5 million on youtube got a big twitch appeal and then mm -hmm. look at academics as guests bundle of britney won't nobody really talk i mean uh britney reiner won't nobody really talk to her outside of like losers you know what i'm saying they got the fresh and fit ain't nobody talking to them for real for real yeah uh, man you know what i'm saying like who, who talks to them like it's people that want to put hands on academics. Like the only person that really talked to academics is Freddie Gibbs, and he threatened him every two seconds, you know? Yeah. And it's just yeah. like they don't do nothing positive out of uh other than like send us backwards. And then in this age of uh where I think Meek Mill had an issue with academics too. Uh mm -hmm. I can't remember how long ago. I think it was something over when Meek was trying to get out of uh Dream Chasers or something where he was just leaking out the information. I just feel that like like you said with the Master P situation, like what are y'all doing other than gossiping, like little girls? You know, I that's, just, what, that's what women do. Act, uh, academics and especially WAC 100, they act like bitches. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm not calling women bitches, but bitch shit is 
gossiping, talking about other folks' business, comparing money. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like as a grown man, this man is 50 years old. This is an OG, but you over here gossiping. My thing is, if he was just like like academics, I could expect that from him, right? You know what I'm yeah. saying? But WAC 100, you supposed to be this hard ass. Like what? 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 What OG or legend talks about other men? Like Dame Dash always said, he was like, I don't see how a man can just sit and talk. Like when he was on Breakfast Club years ago, he's like, do y'all just sit up here and talk about men all day? Like, I don't see, I'm a man, I'm a man. I don't talk about men all day. You know what I'm saying? So it does, it just don't make sense as to why you're comparing Nick Cannon and Master P's money to each other. Cause you saying that Master P has said something to Nick Cannon, but I'm like, Master P, I don't, he didn't go on public saying whatever the fuck it was, but you over here, quote unquote, exposing Master P. That's not going to make everybody be in your favor. We exactly. fuck with P. He has done a whole bunch of shit in the community. If it wasn't for P, Snoop Dogg wouldn't be as big as he is now. And that's a fact. Snoop Dogg will tell you that. After Death Row Records, Snoop was broke. But Master P brought him to No Limit and made him become um, a brand. Mm -hmm. And let him leave and go off and venture off and become a millionaire in a brand of what he is now. Master yeah, P is heavy in the community. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of people who wouldn't be who they were without this man. So that shit is just, like, it's disgusting, really. You know what I'm saying? So I don't fuck with Wack 100 at all. Yeah, I don't know. I feel, I don't know. I, I wonder how, it's hard. It feel like it's a long time because you're in the moment. But I wonder, like, how much longer that wave of, like, niggas lasts. You know? It's, I don't know. It's almost like the niggas with wigs era was. It seemed like every nigga was putting up a skit with wigs. Now every female putting up a skit looking like niggas now. But anyways, I wonder how, like, how long that skit of niggas like, live on and live and last. And it seemed like these niggas keep getting clout. And now, because every nigga got a podcast, these niggas got a podcast. Clubhouse, Clubhouse is, is, is a cancer, too. Like, I don't fuck with Clubhouse, neither. Uh, yeah, I, Clubhouse. Never got, I never got what it was supposed to be for. It was I thought it was supposed to be something positive. And from what I hear, it just seemed like niggas just get on there and argue. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It Like, a bunch of people, like, for example, we have an established podcast, right? You yeah. invite me on here, we talk, right? But with Clubhouse, it feels like it's Twitter with too many voices and everybody just sit and just talk like about and it's I, I i heard about some stuff that's empowering right but only yeah. time i hear about a clip from clubhouse is people going on there talking shit you know what i'm saying saying something that'll go viral and i just can't sit i'd rather just go listen to a podcast that i have genuine interest in than yeah. give a fuck about what somebody else has to say if you have some shit you got to say put it in the comments then i'll yeah. respond accordingly but i don't want to hear what everybody has to say. If not, you call up to the show. Then that way. But Clubhouse, yeah, I don't fuck Clubhouse. That shit remind me of just, like, like you said, it's like Twitter on steroids because now you hear everybody and yeah. they talk about what they, how they feel. Because Twitter, they can say a whole bunch of dumbass shit, but now you actually hearing them say the dumbass shit. Exactly. Exactly. I don't fuck with, yeah. So, and that's I first heard of Clubhouse, they told me it was for business. They was like, oh, yeah, they're going to be on here. They're going to be talking about stocks or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But then, like you said, every time I see something about Clubhouse, it's like they just on there random. Like, you might have one celebrity and then everybody want to get their opinion about relationship. I don't give I don't care. Like, are you talking to somebody? No, I'm single. Okay, I don't give a fuck. Right. You got about how, how you need to be in a relationship. No, I don't care. Yeah, and especially coming from people like who aren't in those or hadn't been in relationships and stuff and that's just what it turned into man so yeah and then it, it just feels like the feds some certain shit just feel like the feds and i feel like whack 100 may be that too you know like that nigga may be an informant that motherfucker sure. uh that motherfucker dante huh <laughs> for sure uh, yeah that motherfucker uh, uh he don't watch power so i can say it but yeah that motherfucker. you watched the new one yet uh, not all of it, but I, I'm familiar with the names. I see that you can look on social media and see what powers about. Yeah, like, I'm gonna say yeah. They don't, they don't already spoiled it. If you, uh, you yeah. uh, I don't know, they don't already spoiled this week's episode. So you, you don't watch the season then, do you? Nah, or not you really. Oh, okay, then cool. Yeah, Dante yeah. the most informing one, but I watched that this morning. So, ugh, dang man, y'all niggas gotta catch on. Don't nobody watch. It seems like everybody will watch it, but then niggas I be online with. Well, I be recording. Well, ain't nobody watching now, so now I can't talk about this episode. But yeah, I be oh. I don't know. Yeah, it be. Yeah, I got watch that Tyreek. Tyreek stepping up. I know. Nah, you know, I still want to call him like a hoe for what he did to my nigga James St. Patrick. But now nah, he stepped. He got three of the baddest 
baddest little females I've ever seen. Lauren, Effie, and um, uh, uh, Diana. Y'all missing out. Uh, what was I about to say? What was I about to say? What was I about to say? Oh, apparently Tom Brady didn't retire either. Oh, he didn't? No, they, I looked at it this morning. They said apparently he took – he uh, retracted. So apparently that wasn't him who said he retired. So now it's yeah, because like, he never officially said anything. That's what I was looking at. Yeah, I was like, no. Because <laughs> if you look, I, I kept re- see us as journalists or podcast, whatever they want to call us. Like I look, I study what the things say, and it yeah. was never an official statement. It yeah. was always saying he was considering retiring, and then everybody took it and ran with it. But I was yeah. like, is he? That's why I didn't make any posts. I saw the uh, it was one guy that like Bleacher Report reported, and he was like Tom Brady announces, and then you know everybody all day posted Tom Brady, and then I was of course I'm driving back, so I don't post it. But then like later that night, they the like the Bucks took off the thank you Tom Brady and everybody because he ain't officially reported it yet. So now don't nobody know. What you on there? Huh? The Bucks had put something on there like "Thank you, Tom they Brady." They said "Thank you, Tom Brady" because they going off the report that the dude oh. said that Tom Brady did. So now don't nobody know, but now he ain't officially reported uh, retire yet. So don't nobody know what he gonna do. So now, oh, so- why would he retire right now? Like he, like they yeah, just he's forty five. You talking about now? Why would he retire? Because he forty fucking five. What you mean? Like, you should let, like he, like he and his like he ascending oh, I- better. I'm saying that as in, look how he's playing. Like it's like everybody's forcing, him to like they they forcing him to retire. But he got better season than half the quarterback in the league. So what he gonna retire for? He still he had like a good that. season for a 44 year old. He had a good season because they threw the ball like a million damn times a year this year. That's the only he had a good he season because they was forcing the MVP. Thing. My statement was he has a better season than half the quarterbacks in the league, which he does. You know what I'm saying? Like he does. So it don't matter how old he is. His season is still great. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, every year, you, you can't, if you can give me three years and he's been playing, you're like, oh, well, this is. I don't a- think he's going to retire because of his skill set. He has kids and he has a wife. He, they sacrificed enough and they like, all right, my nigga, like, we you didn't have seven. Sell, yeah, like, you have seven rings. Like, you, <laughs> you kind of like, 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 what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. you'd be like, all right, five more minutes. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to come to bed. Like, like at a certain point, like you starting to get real fucking selfish. Like you 45, you not only won one all them with the Patriots, you won with a whole different team. So a you at that point, you 44, and on top of that, our kids about to be in high school. You don't miss their whole birth. I don't said here. I feel up to him and his family because his, his family ain't coming out saying they want him to retire. Yes, like, the fuck she is. She, they got plenty of reports from Giselle saying she has said, nigga, you ain't re- first off that you don't see that because you ain't online. I don't think so, bro. <laughs> I, I, they post it all the time with her saying it's sacrifice and it's a lot when he's not here. He's missing stuff. And he says it. They say it all. The, they actually say it on TV. I know, will is, say it's yeah. been a long ass time because I'm telling my age here. But when he got drafted, I think I was like in the fifth grade. A long time. It's been a long, long time. Damn. Damn. Hold on. When he, what year he got drafted? 2000. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. we same age. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I'm just saying. But it's a I'm when I thought, about it, yeah, when I thought about it, because when, when they say he's been playing for 22 seasons, so I took my age and I subtracted about 22, and I said, "Damn!" Yeah, but because yeah. I remember vividly in high school when he was with the Patriots and they were winning and stuff yeah. like that. And I graduated from high school a long time ago, so I'm oh, like, eight? "Yeah, oh, oh, seven. Okay, well, he yeah, also, I'm, I'm on eight, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I remember too, like, he's been playing for fucking ever. That's what I'm saying, Josh. That's a long fucking time. I'm like, damn, like, somebody, like I'm just saying, nigga, like, we, we, like, we literally, we literally finished all of our school. We literally, we are about to retire. And this nigga's still playing. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, you got, he's finished all of his schooling and then finished, he, hold on. They said this the other day. He has three separate decades of a career. Well, I'm sorry. Three separate careers that you could take. I think I said that right. Three separate parts of him that you could take for a championship, mm-hmm. and then they're all a Hall of Fame career. You exactly. could take the first part of the championships he got. You could take the second half of championships he got, or you could take the third half of them. They all a Hall of Fame career. Like, exactly. He has all the Infinity Stones. I just that's like, what I'm saying. Like 
like you got to retire, but like that's selfish. It's not even for to let everybody else win because he don't win them every year. But it's like, damn, bro, like you got kids. But I'm, yeah. I mean, I just be like, fuck it, bro. Like, because at the point, like, it's like he not really doing bad. Like, he's like, yeah, he older, but it ain't like you like, oh I well, mean, hey, make I them pass. Well, you know how you see LeBron, you be like, okay, well, he ain't finna pipe. Drew Brees up. can still make the pass. He retired. Who? Drew Brees. Drew Brees ain't Tom Brady. Look at it from a football perspective. That's what I'm saying. This yeah. motherfucker got. Three, two or three kids. He got a whole what she supposed to just put up this. You you forget this motherfucker is in the like how did he want them in the studio and making a band, which is a good show. I was watching yeah. the uh, flashback when Fred beat up uh Ness. <laughs> another true, quick thing yeah. niggas gonna talk about Ness did all that talking and getting beat up. I've never seen a nigga get choked out. Hey, all right, choke and with his all draws you, down. All you gonna do is choke. All you gonna do is run. yes, nigga. I'm beating you up, ass all out. Like that was right. That, that was, was intense. Like, like, look, you do that. All you gonna do is just wrestle, wrestle. Fred whooping his ass like the Floyd right, had him just like this, and he's like, just like that. Even I think even the second one, like when they started to tussle, like in the hallway, I still mm-hmm. feel like Fred kind of still got him. But like Ness did all that yapping. I'm like, all them up north niggas always lose it to some down south shit, ass mm-hmm. all out. And then Diddy <laughs> that, just, was, like, that Diddy was that was, was the worst part to me. Like your ass is out. Like your draw. Like come on, dog. Bro, come on, they, I, look. Uh, so Diddy don't get enough credit. That making the band shit. My identity came was good as fuck. I don't care what nobody say. Making the band was good as fuck. But Tom Brady works all fucking day, bro. His kids are like in middle fucking school, and I'm pretty sure they want to play fucking high school. I mean, they have he got off seasons though, bro. The off seasons he works in the off season. He he video record his off season. This motherfucker being cryo chambers like Goku. <laughs> That nigga be, they be, but he be also they be vacationing, they be. That's uh, right. You always let somebody know you ain't got kids. Every every episode, you always find a way to let somebody know you single and got no kids. No <laughs> statements like this. Like, no, this no. Part. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm saying at the end of the day, like this, this that type of shit where motherfuckers be like, oh, well, we need to stop and blah blah blah, and then the motherfucker come home. And then he ain't bring the bread in. They ain't doing all the extra shit and some crazy. That's that's the type of shit. She had money. She was a model. She had money. They ain't broke. Then they come home and then this nigga just die because he ain't got nothing else that he living for. He not happy and he sad as fuck at the house. This nigga happy. What's that one doing? meme when Kobe was like? What's that one meme when Kobe retired? They had his like fingers like this, and the meme was like, "So what y'all niggas like to do when he retired?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, I guess we'll figure out soon, though. So I guess we get a uh, wrap it right here. So uh, you got anything to promote for the review, uh, Jay? Yeah, man. Uh, so check out my channel uh, on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash Resview. Uh, also follow me on social media at J A Y R three D. Uh, on Instagram and TikTok. I got a Twitter, but I really don't be on there. I don't fuck with Twitter like that. But you can follow me on there. Also, in Atlanta, I got a show uh, that I'm doing. I'm going to be DJing and performing at the same time, the same night. Uh, It's going to be called J Red and Friends. It's going to be at the Battery. For those in Atlanta, Truest Park, the Battery. That's going to be February 25th. Um, I just dropped the Splack Pack Pack interview. Uh, You know, the round and round we go. Scrub the ground. Yeah, those gentlemen joined me. Uh, so I just posted that. So y'all check out Res View. We got a lot of great content. A lot of, uh, you know, we got some more interviews and stuff coming up. So, man, all I can say is subscribe to the channel and uh, come to my social media and you'll see everything you need to see. Yeah, we will definitely uh, push that out on our stories and our social medias uh, whenever we get a chance. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. And this has been a dope, dope episode. Najee, go ahead and push your, your normal spiel. Yeah, man. So uh, just check your boy out, man. I kind of been re- revamping everything. Uh, I revamped the Purely Najee. Um, and then you got the uh, the Najee experience. So just come check out my, my social medias, man. I've been, I've been trying to amp everything up, kind of post everything. Like, it's really an experience now. So, you know, like, you can see the podcast, the, the skincare, the jewelry business, like, everything that I'm doing. And then, you know, TikTok, Najee, Najee, Najee. Uh, I just finally hit 81,000. So, we just boosted and we're gonna keep moving, and that's really all I got. So yeah, we hope you come back with us, Jay. It's been a funny, funny, Absolutely. funny, funny episode, man. Uh, and we definitely plan on getting the rest of the great combo media family on here so we could shoot the shit with them. And this has been another episode of the Eight More Than Ninety Two podcast where we always keep it one hundred with y'all. We gonna holler at y'all later. Peace.
Peace. I guess we ain't doing shit because I'm not watching football for the rest of the year. So fuck it. I know. Back in this bitch, uh. No, we full attack in this shit, uh. You know the full Mac came equipped, uh. So promise you don't want no issues.